Hello, today I would like to show you how to add Log4j2 framework to your Spring Boot application and also how to configure it. As I said, Log4j2 is a framework and it is very efficient and also highly customizable. We will use properties file approach and it's somewhere over here. Yes, so we will create file like this, more or less. Okay, so first step is adding the dependency to our POM XML file. So let's move under the dependency of the Spring Boot Starter Web. And over here we want to type dependency. And inside we want to type group ID. As the group ID we want org.spring framework dot boot and under this tag we create another one and it will be artifact id and we will use artifact that is called spring dash boot dash starter dash lock or j2 but before we start to use lock for j2 we have to exclude default logging framework, which is called logback, and it comes with the Spring Boot Starter Web. So to make exclusion, so we go over here and we want to type exclusions. Inside we want to type exclusion. Inside exclusion we have to provide group ID of the dependency and also artifact id so we will be excluding dependency with the group id org dot spring framework dot boot and now artifact id will be spring dash boot dash starter dash logging okay pom xml is ready so let's save it now let's update project so we right click on the project folder we select maven and update project over here we make sure that it is selected and we click ok now let's start the application and the default configuration of the log4j2 should do the work so we click start student service and as you can see, we have the logging over here, so it works. Now let's clear it and let's create a new file which will override the default configuration. We want to go to the source main resources where our application properties are living. And here we want to create new file. So we right click it, select new file. We want to name this file log for j2.properties and we click finish in the first place we will define the name of our file so we type name equal sign and let's say we will call it properties config now we will create property so we go down here and we type property after the dot we have to provide the name or key so we type the directory name and after the equal sign we have to provide the value so it will be logs and it will be the directory where we will save our log files now we will create appender and appenders are responsible for delivering log events to their destination first one will be console appender so we start with the appender keyword dot console and the first property will be type and we will simply set it to console after this we have to specify name so again we have to type appender dot console dot name and we will set it to std out later we will use this name to make a reference to this appender Next one is layout type, so we again have to type appender.console 
but this time it will be layout dot type we have different types of layout to choose from like json html and yaml but we will use something that is called pattern layout and it will be simple string with some placeholders provided by the log4j2 now we have to define this layout so we go and type appender dot console dot layout dot pattern first thing we want to display in every log is the logging level and to do it we have to use square brackets and inside we have to type recent dash five level next thing we want to display is the date to do it we have to use present d and between the curly braces we can provide the pattern for this date in the first place we want to display year after this we want the month and the last one will be day we also need time so we will use hour colon minute colon seconds I think it will be enough because we have exact time when something happened. Next placeholder will be present t, and this one allow us to display the thread which generated the logging event. So it will be quite useful if our application will work with multiple threads. And let's display it in the square brackets. Next thing will be present uppercase c. And this one allow us to display the name of the class which called the logger, so it will be quite useful. Next one will be the message. So we are making the dash and to display the message we have to use present msg. It will be message which one we will provide during calling one of the logger methods. Last one will be present n. This placeholder is platform dependent line separator. So we have created console appender, now it's time for the file appender. So like before, we will type appender, but this time file after the dot and we also have to specify type. Over here we want to assign file and next one will be name, so appender file name and we will set it to log file now we will specify the path where we will save our logs so we go down here and we type appender file file name and over here we will use our property so first dollar sign curly braces and Inside we want to type the name of the property so it will be directory name. Now after the slash we will specify the name of the file so it will be student-service.log. At the end we have to specify layout type and layout pattern. We will simply copy those two lines and paste them over here. Of course we have to change console to file over here and also over here. So we have finished the file appender. Now we will set some properties for the root logger. In the first place we type root logger dot level. Over here we are specifying the logging level and let's set it to trace because it is the highest one now we will create references to our appenders first one will be console so we type root logger dot appender ref dot std out dot ref and we will set it to the name of our console appender which is std out Let's create second reference, so we type root logger appender ref file ref and we will set it to log file because it is the name of our file appender. 
Okay, I think it's done, so let's check it out. So now we will save the file and we will move to the main entry point of our application, which is application Java. Over here we have to create an instance of our logger object. So we will go over here and we will type private static final type logger and let's say it will be logger. Now we have to use log manager class to use the static method which is get logger. As the argument of this method we will pass our class name and to do it we'll type application class get name and the semicolon at the end. We have two errors and this is because we have to import these two types from the log4j library and this is the one and the second will be this one. Okay, so now we can finally log some messages using logger object. Let's go above the run method and over here I will paste some messages. As you can see we have different methods which we are calling on the logger object and those methods are the representation of the log message level as you can see in the description. Since our log level is set to trace so all of these messages should be displayed after running the application. Okay so let's run our application. So we want to save it. Okay, and as you can see over here, we have five messages in the console and this is exactly the same what we have in the main method. We also have configured log4j2 to save the logs to the file and as you can see we have the directory over here and if we open it we have the student service.log file and as you can see we have the logs saved to our file. And those messages can be investigated later if we will have any problems with our application, which is very helpful in the production environment. Okay, so let's go back to our application.java. To summarize, we can do exactly the same for other classes. So we can create the logger object and then log some messages. We can log messages when we are handling some HTTP requests. We can also log messages when we handle some events or when we are performing some database um, operations. And very useful thing about logging is also saving errors and stack traces. Okay, it's all for today from my side. Remember to like the video if you enjoy it and subscribing to my channel if you want to get the notification about the latest videos. See you next time.